Good evening, legends. All right, I just want to jump in and do a quick update on our impact of the next three rounds because I do think it is important to start focusing a little bit on buy planning. And what I mean by that is especially that round 13 and 14 section there. So with round 13, you can only fill your starting 13, right? So only 13 scorers. If you have an extra, so if you have two edges, right? Let's say you're allowed two edges. You have a third that is playing in round 13 as well. So you've got someone from the Dolphins, say it's Lemuelu or, or Aiken. You have Britton Nicara from the Sharks. And you also have Scott Sorensen from the Panthers. All three play in round 13, right? If they all only had Edge as their, you know, as their tag, Sorensen has dual, obviously there. Uh, and then Aiken has dual center, okay? How that would work. If they all had just edge only, you only get two of those three scores. You cannot get the score from your third guy. All you can do is loop that player. So if you have another edge that's not playing and has a buy, you can pop them in your starting team and you can loop between your second and third option in that edge position. So what the positive with those guys with Jewel is, if Scott Sorensen has the, you know, he has the mid and the edge tag, you have three edges, you could then place Scott Sorensen in your midsection, which is great. Or Aiken could slot down in your center position. So that's something you do need to think about coming in to round 13, 16, and 19, our major buy rounds where you see that you have seven teams on the buy in those weeks. You only get 13 scorers, which is good in a way, but it also makes it very tough because you need to have all of the, the plays in their correct positions. So some planning goes into it for sure. And we'll get into that deeper as we go along. If you wanted to get a further quicker look into it, check out my buy planning video there with um, with Mark Jessup, with my with myself. So it's the ultimate buy planning uh, for, for my one. And then yeah, type in buy planning 2023 for that with Mark Jessup from the amateurs. So that's the uh, that's an easy way to look at you know that section in round 13. But for now, something very, very simple is you know, someone in my comments just mentioned like, oh, if you've got Fogarty in your team, you're potentially looking at Dylan Brown. So the Eels play in round 13. The Raiders play in round 13 as well. So there's two players. You need two halves. So there's your two. If, you, if, you happen, if you're happening to look at Nico Hines as well, then he plays round 13. If he's not in that Origins team and he's playing uh, for the Sharks that week, you would then have three halves on your team. Again, it is very early to look at that stuff given we, we've seen so many injuries and all those things happen. But it is something to note that try not to overload in a certain position if you are looking and you're planning. Because if I'm buying Dylan Brown right now, I've bought Fogarty for a reason. I'm looking to hold them all the way through that buy period. And if they get caught, obviously in round 13, they're going to be both playing. But then in a further round down the track, if you're looking at Eels and Raiders of those two teams there, you will see the Eels have a buy in round 16. You do get Fogarty in that one. And then in round 19, it's the opposite. But you get one of them for round 19. That's Fogarty. You don't get Dylan Brown for round 20. So yeah, it, it obviously, depending on the schedule, some of the schedules here, they have a buy in 13 and 16, right? So that team there, who is that? The Broncos have the 13 and 16. So if you're pairing them up with someone else that has a buy in 13, or they, uh, yeah, likewise. It, it, it can, there's not too many pairings, thank goodness. Uh, they usually, they've tended to switch, switch them around. Like, you know, the, the Roosters have a really interesting one with a around 14 by, and then a little bit later than that, where's the Roosters from there? Second last team, round 14, and then round 19. So they're two in that section there. They're the only squads outside of, who have got their Raiders who have that 14 and 19. Uh, so it's pretty interesting how, how it's played out with uh with the combinations but really it was just a, a quick example to show you that there so i have a little look ahead for round 13 obviously just not to match up too many players if you've got two that's fine three i think will be fine because you likely will trade one of them out but just um just keep it in your mind so let's look here over the next three games while we're here and the the colors seem to be a little bit uh frustrating for people so i've re removed the colors there for the next three rounds we can just focus on those so tigers come up against the, the Dolphins, Dragons, and Panthers there. So the next two are pretty good for them, and then they have a pretty tough couple with Panthers and Broncos. So just be aware of that. 
and they don't play in round 13, but they play all of the other big buyers. So if you have a look at your squad now, count how many you've got up in all the different positions for round 13. And then you, know, you look at that and you go, well, if I've, I'm fairly well covered at the moment, I could grab a tiger or two and not be a problem. Titans, I find it hard to, to go for any of those guys. They've missed round 13 as well, which seems, I think personally, will be one of the easier rounds, round 13. It's round 16, uh, 14, 16, 17 are fairly tough. And then round round 19, you've got most of your teams got through their buy, so it becomes a bit easier for sure uh, because a lot of them have got through a couple of their buys at least and maybe have one to go, or they've gotten through all three of their buys, which I think one or two teams are in that situation. For the Dolphins there, as I said, it starts to get a little bit more difficult to them. After their Tigers game, it's Broncos, Eels, Knights, Cowboys, Eagles. So a little bit tougher for the Dolphins. So if you're looking at them, just be aware that some attacking stats may drop a little bit. For the Storm, it's Broncos into the Bulldogs, Roosters, Rabbitohs, Titans. So after this game against the Broncos, it gets a lot easier for Storm players and a, a team that you should definitely look at some guys that are good with their base stats, but could potentially have some attack as well in the Grants, in Eli Katoa's, Pappenhausen, Jerome Hughes, these types of players, obviously Munster as well, if he's fit and firing. Sharkies have their bye this week, but then they have an in- they are very much an interesting team next week because they don't have a bye all the way through until round 16. So good players to purchase uh, that team after this round five bye. Panthers there, don't look to buy any in this week. They're out next week in round six, and then they have a really good run as well all the way through until round 16. So non-origin players from those teams, really red hot. For the Bunnies, I think they're an avoid team for now. Buy in round seven and 13, least avoiding them until round eight or nine, but they have a really tough couple of matchups there. So I'm not suggesting any purchases from that team. For the Doggies, Josh Curran's obviously on our lips at the moment. If in... You know, three more games. Are you looking to sell a couple of Salmon, a Hughes, a Karaz, Hacho? Are you looking to sell one of the, a couple of them by that point? Yeah, you know, Hacho could be an interesting one. A Karaz could be an interesting one because you get them in round 13, 14 if you could just get through round eight. So if you do have a lot of dogs and you're not planning to sell too many of them, really look to cut the fat from the rest of your sides, the guys that aren't playing at this stage so that you can carry three or four dogs heading into round eight. And if you are looking at getting five, which I'm potentially looking at, I haven't looked into it far enough, but um, you know, Curran could be that guy that comes in. I think you'll score pretty well, but you do have to be aware that that would, I think, bring me to five dogs, which just seems ridiculous, doesn't it? <laughs> um, the ones I've got right now are <laughs> hard enough to score points. Eels, they got their round nine by, and there's a couple of good purchases in their side. Round nine by, and then round 16. So they play 13 and 14, a really good team to be targeting over the next few weeks. Look at those eels for sure. And potentially another reason to hold Joey Lusick. Raiders, they have a little while now, obviously until round 10, which is great until they're by. So they're still a solid purchase. Eels, Titans, Broncos, Sharks. So yeah, some solid matchups, but you know, a nice one in Titans in round six, which is cool. And then they play round 13, but miss 14. So I do think you have to trim a little bit of uh, you know, your Raiders complement in probably round 10. And uh, yeah, considering that you know, they only play three out of five games in that period. And if they're not keepers for you or you, they're getting you through the whole buy period, scoring well, they're not really a good option to, to look at. Dragons next up, a couple of solid options. And then they have their buy in round 11. And then you get that, they get you through all the, right, all the way through to 16 as well. So Knights, Tigers, Warriors, pretty solid couple of uh, matchups for them. No one's really, uh, a te- you know, no one in that team is like a, a, a no-go because of their schedule. Knights have a really, they have the best schedule out of everyone. I think they're the only team that I suggest that you can hold for throughout the rest of the season. So buy in round 12, just before round 13, you miss 16 with them, but you get every other major buy, which is awesome. And they don't miss round 20 either. And then the next few games, Dragons, Roosters, Dogs, Dolphins. It's pretty solid for, you know, if you're looking at, obviously, Caitlin Ponga there, it's definitely someone I'm looking at this week as a potential trade-in. So we'll see what happens with that one. That's where I'm, yeah, I think is a great purchase is, is Caitlin Ponga. Dolphins, Warriors, Tigers, Titans before their buy in round 12. And then, you know, if he doesn't make origin... It's dogs in round 13, which is pretty wild. So Ponga, a really good purchase this week on their draw. Broncos, 
Yeah, they have the Storm, Dolphins, Raiders. It gets a little bit easier from there with Tigers and then back to sort of Roosters, Hills, Seagulls. So it's not a really crazy easy draw, but I think we hold on to Pikura. If we can get him sort of in round six or seven, I think the next couple of rounds he could potentially score a try, which would be good. The Eagles, they have still a fairly tough run. Panthers, Warriors, and then uh, and then it is obviously Titans there, but Eels, Raiders, Broncos, Storm, Dolphins, it's still pretty tough for them. So no real clear standouts from the Eagles for me. The Wars, their schedule opens up a fair bit here. You've got the Bunnies, Eagles, Dragons, Titans, Knights in that next five, which is cool. Uh, SJ, really good guy to look at coming back uh, into goal kicking, which is nice. Roosters, they have the Dogs, Knights over the next two. It's a little bit of an easier run, both away though, and then the Storm, yeah, wedged in between the Dragons in, in that sort of section there. So it's not crazy good, but um, it does get a little bit easier later on in the season for Roosters. And then the Cowboys, they have the Titans, Eels, and Sharks over the next three. So yeah, nothing too bad there, but uh, you know, the Panthers in round eight with a humming Cleary, I'd imagine there. You've got to get that through that game, and then it's a couple of e easier matchups as well. So the Cowboys have got a pretty good <clears throat> over the start to this season. So they're definitely a team to target. And yeah, hopefully you've got a couple of middles in that Panthers game because they'll get heaps of tackles. So that's the uh, next three games there. I didn't explain that round 13 thing terrifically well. I did, I feel like, I explained the dual position guys and the starting 13 really good. So if you pop it out, if you've got the whole list of your players like that rather than list form on the field form and that anyone on the bench doesn't count unless you're looping them. And the loop means you've got someone on a buy or not playing in your starting team, which meant, which means then you get an emergency. But if they're not in that starting 13, there's no loop, you don't get their score. So that's that. But so make sure that you are starting to plan on who you bring into your side that fits that bill for round 13. So that's really, really cool. And just be aware the Blaze Talung is going to get half and center jewel as well. Not, not sure if that's going to help us in the half situation, if you've got Fogs, if you've got you know, Dylan Brown and, and these types of guys. But anyone with dual position, super helpful for your side. You look at Brandon Smith, you can play him in the mids or you can play him in the hooking position in round 13, which is super cool, super great to look at. So that's that, guys. Thanks for joining us for this video. I know there's a lot at the moment, but um, it's all really helpful. And I thank you guys for watching and listening so much. So have a good one, guys. See you later.